Good evening, everybody. President Obama today addressing the American public on his plan to escalate in Iraq. But he failed to answer the one basic question that he framed that the nation desperately needs answered. How does the situation in Iraq pose a national security threat to the United States? Instead, his address vacillated between a call to action and a promise of no action. Contradiction and ambiguity continue to be a hallmark of this president's presidency. We want to show you two statements from the president's Iraq news conference. Two statements we believe you'll find extraordinary. First, the president, as he laid out his plan for 300 more military advisors that he's sending to Iraq. The president stressing they will not be engaged in combat. We're prepared to send a small number of additional American military advisors, up to 300, to assess how we can best train, advise, and support Iraqi security forces going forward. American forces will not be returning to combat in Iraq. Now here is what the president had to say about engaging in combat. We're developing more information about potential targets associated with ISIL. And going forward, we will be prepared to take targeted and precise military action if and when we determine that the situation on the ground requires it. Now, this is not the first time that President Obama, or his predecessors for that matter, have contradicted themselves. But what is extraordinary about the statements is that they were delivered in succession as part of the same thought today. The president also confirming he is willing to include Iran in the process, despite their stated goal of wiping Israel off the map and their history of killing our troops in Iraq. You know, our view uh, is that uh, Iran can play a constructive role uh, if it is helping to send the same message to uh, the Iraqi government that we're sending, uh, which is uh, that Iraqi only holds together if it's inclusive, and that if the interests of Sunni, Shia, and Kurd uh, are all respected. We'll be taking all of this up here in moments, talking with House Armed Services Committee Chairman Congressman Buck McKeon of Texas. Also tonight, he was targeted by the Obama Justice Department uh, for her reporting on Benghazi. Former CBS News investigative journalist Cheryl Atkinson joins us to talk about the extent of the government's intrusion into her privacy and ours. And the IRS is not only claiming that Lois Lerner's emails are lost, they are now claiming that they destroyed the hard drive from which they originated. Best-selling author, History Channel star Brad Meltzer, among our guests tonight to talk about what is a widening conspiracy theory. Our first guest tonight says the president's options in Iraq stem from years of disengagement by this administration. While the United States will do its part, it's ultimately up to the Iraqis, he says, as a sovereign nation. Joining us, Congressman Buck McKeon. He's chairman of the House Armed Services Committee. And, Congressman, it's uh, great to have you with us. Thanks for having me, Lou. You, the president contradicted himself, as we uh, reported at the outset of the, of the broadcast. He also seemed to embrace greater ambiguity than explanation for the American people. After you listen to the president, Mr. Chairman, where are we headed in Iraq? Uh, I, I'm a little confused, as I think you and your listeners are, Lou. It, um, the president has done this before. We kind of went through this same thing with Syria, and then we asked Russia to kind of pull our fat out of the fire. Now we're looking to Iran. I, I think Russia and Iran have, have proven to not be our greatest allies. And I think that that's, uh, uh, I think you get the uh, innuendo there. but. It, it, it's really, I, I wish the president would sit down with their military advisors, those who are best equipped to, to give him solid, sound advice, make a decision, and then move forward and hold to that. You know, where you say, I'm going to send a few troops, up to 300. Uh, last week, I think they said there would be no boots on the ground. Well, Correct. they're going to have to be on the ground. And then he talks about targets and targeting and different things. You know, it, it sounds to me, if, if you just happened to listen to this and had never heard him or knew of him or knew what he, what he was saying, 
that he kind of is making up things as he goes along. And that's a scary thing uh, when our military doesn't, they don't operate that way. They plan, they know what they're doing, they execute, as we saw with the, the uh, capture of the, of the uh, Abu guy Kutala. from Benghazi. Right. right. Uh, let me turn to, uh, to the fact that uh, th th this is a matter of national interest. The president himself said that. Uh, the first question that to be answered is, how is this in the national interest? It is the, the, a question among many, uh, but strangely, a question among many that he did not answer. Uh, and I don't think the American people have been uh, exactly uh, just uh, embraced uh, as, uh, as adult, mature partners uh, in this government of the people, by the people, and for the people, by their elected representatives. I, I mean, this is, this is extraordinary, where appar apparently the White House believes that it can just simply order uh, involvement of the United States without making an appeal either to the American people or uh, a, creating a partnership with the Congress of the United States. Well, plus we have allies in the area, Sunni allies that have been have stood by us in other times that he ought to probably check in with some too. Uh, we've seen a pattern now, uh, what he did with the transfer of the five Taliban for, for Sergeant Bergdahl. Mm -hmm. He deliberately avoided telling Congress, even though the law required him to give us a 30-day notice on any transfers from, from Guantanamo. Uh, we know that he let at least 80 to 90 people know in the State Department, in the Defense Department, and the Justice Department, but yet not one member of leadership of Congress in either party was informed of that. You know, and I, and I just, uh, something I just heard before coming on this uh, program, Lou, is that the President is planning on signing the Ottawa Convention in a matter of days. This is a treaty that would ban the use of all landmines, even the safe ones that we use. And we had General Scaparotti, the commander of all of our forces in South Korea in town a couple of months ago, and he talked to us about the critical situation they're facing over there. And landmines are very important to our defense to give us adequate warning and help us in defending our interests in Korea. And General Dempsey, our chairman of our Joint Chiefs, has said, in my best uh, military advice, we need landmines. This is a bad decision for our military. It's a bad decision for our country. It's a bad decision for our taxpayers. Uh, you know, some decisions he agonizes over for a long time and then takes no action. Some decisions just kind of seem to come out of the blue and he takes action. It's hard to... to to well, follow this. I... Well, Mr. Chairman, as you point out, I mean, this is a critical issue and integral to the defense of South Korea uh, sure. uh, below the uh, DMZ. Uh, right. He, he, this cannot surely be ra a, a, a matter of uh, taking effect without the ratification of the Senate, could it? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I do know that my good friend Randy Forbes uh, on the Armed Services right. Committee from Virginia has an amendment he's going to put on a bill to stop any funding to implement this, uh, this treaty. And I want to support that and do whatever we can to make sure this doesn't happen. Congressman Buck McKeon, Chairman of the House Armed Services Committee, good to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. Thank you. Secretary